Hello and welcome to Business Reporters Improving Business Performance Campaign. I'm Alastair Greener. The term Internet of Things is more than 20 years old and yet IoT is still far from reaching its full potential in a range of industries. Why the slow rate of change? When can we expect to reach the tipping point where IoT starts to deliver the massive transformation that's been promised for so long? Our guest today, Sentil Ravindran, Executive Vice President at Vitusa. He argues that we are just about to reach that inflection point and that AI and machine learning will play a crucial role in the scaling of IoT. Good morning. Good morning, Alistair. Now, IoT has been around for a few years now. Has it delivered on its promise so far? To some extent, Alistair, I would say it has delivered its promises, but uh, you know whether it has created a significant impact, uh, I think the answer is uh, not yet. Things have changed. Off late, you know, if you had observed uh, the advances in artificial intelligence and machine learning, and then what, what's happening around 5G, edge computing, and then the security at a you know APA level and so on and so forth. Now this is becoming much more secure environment to operate on. I think now the AI and then a combination of uh, IoT is really taking off well. How do they enable or enhance IoT? IoT sensor by itself doesn't mean much. It generates uh, tons and tons of data. So just to give you an example, uh, imagine a factory, a manufacturing factory where we are taking temperatures uh, about a motor. So the temperature sensor sends information at a second level or you know, even at a microsecond level. This generates uh, you know, uh, terabytes and petabytes of data. So what do we do with this terabytes and petabytes of data? Second thing is if you imagine or if you compound the problem with the information from uh, hu or humidity sensors, information about vibrations and so on and so forth, Suddenly, you are having to operate with petabytes of data and then understand what's going through the, the entire petabytes of data. So that is where the machine learning really comes into picture. So machine learning and then a combination of big data processing gives you an ability to go through massive amount of data, correlate with variables. In our example, let's say I can correlate temperature of the motor with the past failure rates, and I will be able to predict when this machine is likely to fail. Right. Then so that I can procure uh, enough supply of spare parts and then ensure the production doesn't stop. So the key and then very important point is how do we process vast amount of data from IoT? How do we process this data and then predict a business outcome? That, that, that's all about uh, the game now. What are the typical use cases of AI in IoT? So there are several use cases and uh, probably I would say uh, three of my favorite use cases are one remote healthcare. Imagine a person with very limited access to the healthcare sitting in a remote corner of the world. Now, if you can send him medical devices, medical IoT devices, and then start getting him into a platform, AAML platform, now suddenly he has the same level of access like uh, any other privileged person, right? The second thing is in a manufacturing setup, let's say especially pharma manufacturing. Vaccine means or availability of vaccine means saving lives. So any fault occurring in a manufacturing factory uh, due to even whatever smaller reason, if that can be predicted, if that can be prevented, then we have a massive uh, you know, improvement to the lives. The third uh, use case that I would say is around worker safety. Imagine people working at, uh, let's say, 98th floor in Manhattan and imagine the, any wind blowing up or imagine a wrong posture. So now if you are able to use IoT and then get information and then give them an alert, let's say uh, a, a triggered alert, then we are making them safe. Uh, where does Vetusa come into the picture? I mean, how do you help? So Vetusa is a, a digital engineering specialist with a very, very deep in industry focus on three domains. We do uh, banking and financial services, healthcare life sciences, tech and then high tech. These are the three things that we do really, really well. And how do we really help our customers, is, especially in the context of AI and then IoT journey, we help them identify the business cases, 
with our uh, playbooks. Second thing is we help them with our accelerators, which are pre-trained models, which are pre-built for you know, ready deployment. The third thing is the data engineering, which takes uh, roughly about 60 to 80 percent of the time in an AIoT product, completely you know, reduced or drastically reduced. Can you explain the process of how you implement this for a client? So that typically the process has, uh, I would say, three parts, uh, Alistair, when I talk about A and then IoT. A, uh, the, in a customer journey or in a manufacturing journey, where you are going to create an impact. B, a technical job of, you know, really handcrafting the model. C, taking it to the production in an explainable way. Now, there are several companies in the IoT space. So what sets Bertusa apart from the rest? Our approach is very, very customer focused. When I say customer focused, we focus about the customer journeys and then we try to see how it can, make, it can be made much more intelligent. In, in summary, very deep digital engineering expertise with the customer centricity. And then we achieve this customer centricity by eliminating the frictions that they will solve. So we help them identify with our playbook. We help them build with our pre-trained models, accelerators. We help them with our data engineering approach, which takes enormous amount of time. Okay, so can you give us an example of a client you've helped to achieve its IoT goals using AI? One of the examples that is closest to my heart is the place where we have helped our customer to build a worker safety platform. The worker safety platform gathers using wearable belts and then other IoT devices, information about the worker's condition, their postures and the other things. This operates five times better than, or five times faster than the comparable options. That is another significant part. So once this information is gathered, then what the platform does is it predicts possible eventualities, possible you know, failure points, possible uh, you know, uh, risk that the customer, uh, customer's workers are get, getting exposed into. I think this is one of the classical and then very beautiful example of how a combination of uh, IoT and then artificial intelligence machine things came into play and then deliver a phenomenal impact. So looking into the future, when do you think IoT will really transform the way we live and produce? I think the time is already now. The three frictions which were standing against AI and then IoT to come in, uh, do a benefit, a benefitful impact have been or are being have been significantly solved now. So the number one friction, the network congestion, the number two friction, converting uh, t petabytes of data into intelligence, the number three friction around security. This have been uh, phenomenally addressed, you know, thanks to a lot of uh, disruptive innovative work. And I firmly believe the time for uh, AI and then IoT is now. Well, it's been great finding out more. You've given us a lot to think about. So uh, Sentil Ravindran from Vertusa, thanks very much indeed for joining us. Thanks, Alistair.